What's up guys, welcome back to my studio and I'm excited to bring you a little Q&A video. Yesterday I put out a questionnaire on my Instagram and asked people if they had any questions about photography and we got a lot of questions and I had to spend some time going through them and figuring out which ones could be most helpful and let's get into this. All right, number one, start with an easy one. What's the best advice you've ever gotten? I think earlier this year, I got some pretty epic advice. Just point the camera in the right direction and hope for the best. I think that that's some pretty solid advice. Where should an amateur photographer start out? Well, I started with surfing. I photographed my friends back in Perth in Australia I used to, I think it was 300, so a really long zoom lens. Um, it was just the kit lens that came with the 30D that I was using. Just really started to explore the camera and my advice would be to try as many different types of photography as you can. And through that, you'll start to build skill with using the camera, learning the settings, learning how the different functionality works with whatever camera you have. And through that, perhaps you'll figure out the types of things you like to shoot. Desert Island Lens. I would probably say my telephoto lens, which is a Sigma 120 to 300. I can get it. Oh, it's a big guy. It is extremely heavy, and I might not necessarily recommend this unless you need 2.8. Um, as I started to get into wildlife photography and had the need to adapt a two times converter, the wider the aperture, the better. So I opted for this. It also has internal zoom, which is a bit of a game changer. I can mount it on my red, put it on rails and don't need to worry about the lens shifting position. Has the virus affected you and your business? Well, yes and no. I unfortunately couldn't visit the Arctic and Antarctic like I had planned this year. So it's sad to not get to see the polar regions, but Iceland is of course very close in terms of landscape and the types of things I can photograph. So being here, being at home and re-exploring some places that, that I haven't visited for a while, it's actually been quite good for my business because I've been able to get a more in-depth understanding of my surroundings. And through that, there's been quite a few opportunities for foreign production crews who couldn't make it here in person they've given me the chance to shoot for them and I've also been able to get into filmmaking so yeah actually I think it's kind of benefited me in a way but it still really sucks wish this thing would go away is the Sony tough enough so I don't know how many of you know but I use a Sony a7r4 as my main body here it is um, it is a beast of a camera and the Mark II, that was my first Sony, the A7R II, that really didn't handle the cold. I had quite a lot of issues, especially when temperatures dropped down beneath minus 20 Celsius, then I started to have uh, some real difficulties even taking a single photo. So the when the Mark III came, then they changed the battery, became as good as the Canon, in my opinion, the LPE6. And ever since, I really haven't had an issue. I had it out in freezing temperatures. I remember in Greenland doing a shoot at an ice camp in negative 35, taking pictures of the Aurora, and it just handled it. So yeah, definitely tough enough. Favorite camera backpack to date? Hmm, well, got it right here, actually. It's pretty big. Is the f-stop 40 liter bag. I can't remember what the model name is, but I'll find it online in a minute. The f-stop bag has been amazing. I've been trying a lot of camera bags and I do a lot of hiking, so it really has to be comfortable, light, and be secure and rugged enough to keep my gear safe out there. I've taken this one on some high mountain expeditions, proper alpine expeditions, and it's held up super well. I've had ice equipment strapped to the outside, climbing harness, helmet, sleeping equipment, sleeping bag, food for three days, camera gear, five drone batteries, drone, all fits in there. And yeah, I've been able to 
basically climb anything that I need to and it hasn't left me with sore shoulders like many other bags. Do you ever shape light and if so, how? Well, that's a pretty great question because yes, I do actually. I'm always sculpting the light in my photos, whether that's through a radial filter or a brush or many of both. Um, I always like to enhance the direction that the viewer's eye is going through the frame to get to the subject, whatever that is. And you can do that by enhancing the directional light that was naturally in the image or even just creating it from scratch. We can go into this in the future. There's a lot to share. How old were you when you started photography and how did you start? Well, as I was saying, I started by taking pictures of surfers and I think I was around 17 years old when I started. So it's been about 10 years since I first got into photography and about five years since I've been able to turn it into a business. Any plans to live somewhere else and make that place your creative canvas? That's a pretty good question. I am pretty happy here in Iceland. I'm pretty chill here. I think it's a great place to be and there are basically endless opportunities to innovate and get creative with photography and the creative industry as a whole. And to me, and for what I do, it really is just the ultimate place, so I don't think so. I'm happy here. How often do you go back to a location because the light wasn't great last time? That is a funny one because this summer in particular, I have literally been endlessly going back to locations and figuring out when and how I can get the light that is in my brain, the thing that I'm trying to get visually, but it's just not happening. And sometimes I'm camping multiple days in one location waiting just for one single shot. So very often. Any secrets to share regarding your Instagram export settings? That's an interesting one because I should have some secrets, but in all reality, after many years of exporting at what I believe to be the best possible size to limit compression inside of the app, I realized that when I needed that photo, it became either impossible for me because I'm out in the field to go back into that specific Lightroom catalog and find it. So then I was left with just this low res version and I needed it to send to a client or for some specific magazine or something. So I just started exporting at full res and then I just let the computer do the processing. I mean, the screen is tiny as it is and it's already getting crushed by just being on the internet compression wise. So I don't really bother if I'm honest. Have you reached the level you wanted to be in photography career and image quality wise? I don't think I'll ever reach the level because I don't really know what I want it to be. Photography is just a endless creative journey for me and I'm happy to have it that way. It gives me drive, it gets me out of bed in the morning because there's always something new to think about or experience or take photos of. And image quality, I mean, Heck yeah, the A7R4 is 60 megapixels. That's more than my little eyeballs could ever conjure up, so yeah. <laughs> Scrolling through my screenshots and there's a picture of my coffee from this morning. Actually did a pretty good job making this little Cortado. So many failures, so many failures. I would love to know what lenses for Sony you recommend, mostly nature photography. I have, of course, tried many different lenses and you know that my favorite telephoto lens is the 120 to 300, but for shorter lenses, wider lenses, I tend to stick to the Sigma range because they're super cheap and extremely sharp. In particular, I love this one, Nate. That one under the couch, fantastic. Just hold my hand there. 135, 1.8. It's a pretty ridiculous combination. Um, the photos you can get at 1.8. Firstly, they're extremely sharp in the in-focus area and I just love the look. I remember using this with a polar bear in Svalbard. Beautiful bear. And I was able to just get a very interesting depth because it's not so tight like traditional wildlife photos are all on huge lenses so to be on a wider focal length but still retain that level of blur in the background which created a very interesting combination and ever since i've just 
always love this lens. Success. Preemptively read this question and got a little bit prepared. Are you satisfied with the RET? Thinking about getting the Komodo. Komodo looks amazing. For me, I needed higher frame rates than what that camera could do. So I went for the Dragon 6K. Here he is. It's rigged up to be on the Ronin 2 at the moment. And the Red Code codec has just been unbelievable. It's allowed me to achieve a similar outcome than what I would get using my photography camera and shooting in RAW. So to be able to create moving versions of my images, that's really why I got this camera. And I'm very excited at our future together, my little guy. Have you ever used a housing for getting in the ocean, rivers or lakes in Iceland? That is a cool one because, well, I've only done it once, but short answer, yes. I had the opportunity to take underwater photos of icebergs. Me and my friend went out into the Glacier Lagoon one time a few years ago. And of course, being around icebergs is extremely dangerous. So we just stuck to the shoreline and found smaller pieces of ice that couldn't be a danger to us. Then captured images that took a bit of editing to get how my brain had wanted them, but pretty stoked. I want to do that again. I think just need to buy a housing one day. Essentials for shooting through the winter. That kind of ties in to the next question. Do you ever take off the hat? Not really. Gonna answer two more questions and then it's getting a bit long. Which drone are you using and which can you recommend for a beginner drone pilot? Drones make up a huge part of my job. This summer in particular, I was flying almost every single day. Uh, my main drone is the Inspire 2. When I'm just hiking or just specifically using a drone for photography purposes, then I use the Mavic 2 Pro. Here they are. You can see clearly how much smaller the Mavic is. Being in Iceland, we have such surreal nature that I would be doing it an injustice not to capture it in the highest possible resolution. So having 6K RAW has been just incredible and has become a major part of my career. I would recommend the Mavic 2 for anyone just starting out with drones. It is an incredible tool. It's very, very easy to use and has solid quality that can hold up in any professional situation. The image quality for stills is absolutely amazing. And this is the one I would recommend. Unless you really, really need RAW, then it's a massive investment compared to this. But when you shoot in RAW, especially with dramatic nature, it's very hard to go back. Final question. One advice for someone leaving a full-time job and wanting to establish a career in photography. Well, this is exactly what I did. I have an accounting degree and I worked for one year in accounting, but I actually spent that whole year just saving up to be able to move here to Iceland. So one advice would be to save up as much as you can because well, as soon as you change your lifestyle and go into freelance, photography or videography, there'll be some struggles in the beginning. That's just a fact. And you're really gonna have to dive deep at times to make it work. But if you're really passionate about what you do, then you're going to succeed 100%. So yeah, having a little bit of a financial backing can go a really long way just to get you through those tougher times. But put it this way, you're gonna have your work be also the thing that you want to do for fun and I love that that's the greatest thing in my life being able to just wake up and be able to focus on the thing that I'm most passionate about so with that said that brings me to the end of my Q&A that was a lot of questions and it was only a handful of the ones I received so thank you everyone for going out of your way to add a question in and help me make this video um, you are all the best and I will continue to post some of my new imagery from the summer over on Instagram. 
If you haven't seen that before, it is at Benjamin Hardman. And yeah, remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more photography and videography related material in the future. And I'll be back with something new very soon. Cheers, guys.